So, maging sa online po ay good morning. So, purihin po ang Panginoon. At uh, nakabalik po kami after two weeks uh, from uh, U.S. So, we have a big uh, family there in U.S. Uh, from the IGM family as well as with Echu and A's family. So, we visited also sina Pastor Echu and then uh, Brother A's. So, purihin po ang Panginoon sa mga panalangin ninyo ay uh, safely ay nakarating doon at nakabalik dito at talagang uh, andun po yung refreshing touch ng Panginoon. At the same time ay uh, talagang uh, binuhay ulit nito yung vision. Kasi ang ganda po ng GMI conference kasi ang vision po nila ay a vision to complete the world mission. So, hindi po tayo huli sa tinatahak po natin at dahil yon din po ang ating focus. So, maraming mga magagandang nangyari during the time. Uh, talagang daily ay uh, marami pong mga uh, magagandang kapahayagan ng Panginoon. So, purihin ang Panginoon for this. At yung mga kasama ko ay nandun pa sa U.S., So, babalik sila, Pastor Miguel, and uh, sama ni Dona, Ati Dona, by October 24. Pastor uh, Volter and uh, Ati Maloy ay on October 5. Kami ni Pastor Jenny ay nauwi nung midnight ng uh, Friday. So, ayun po. Uh, can you greet each other? Good morning, and God bless you. Uh, minsan, we need to bless one another. We need to greet one another kasi paminsan-minsan lang tayo magkasama no? as a family. So, nasa last quarter na po tayo ng 2023. Nine months had passed already and kumusta po tayo sa nakalipas na siyam na buwan? Are we improving or not improving or di natin alam? Ayan. So, sabi ni Socrates, the unexamined life is not worth living. At uh, nabubuhay tayo sa tinatawag na fast-changing societies and uh, yung kultura natin na dito sa contemporary world ay uh, from time to time, or most of the time, ay uh, uh, tayo po ay uh, hinuhold nito bilang mga tao, bilang human beings, na hindi po tayo masyado mag-reflect kasi fast changing po talaga. And hindi rin po tayo yung, uh, yung so much thinking about changes. At actually, adaptation to changes has become automatic and unquestionable na sa kapanahon na natin. Kaya ayun po. So before we go on, let's pray and hingin natin po ang pagpapala ng Diyos sa kanyang mga salita ngayong umaga. Mabuti ka aming Diyos, ikaw ay tapat. Hindi mo kami iniwan, hindi mo kami pinabayaan. Constant ka, Panginoon, kami ay pabago-bago. Salamat na may Diyos kami na katulad mo, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we can really count on you no matter what, Lord. Kaya sa umagang ito, ikaw magpala sa mga salita na ngayon ay aming uh, pag-uusapan. Hinihiling ko ang patnubay ng Santo Espiritu sa Unicode na gagamitin gayon din sa bawat isa na makikinig Panginoon. Hayaan mo Lord na let your Holy Spirit just, prove, uh, just move freely in our midst Lord God maging sa mga nasa online. Hayaan mo yung truth from your word ay patuloy na siyang magrema at uh, maging uh, uh, makapanguna sa aming buhay upang ito ang maging gabay namin Panginoon. Salamat at ikaw lamang ang siya nami itinataas sa pangalan ni Jesus, ang aming dalangin. Amen. Okay, kanina naman na-mention ko yung sinabi ni Socrates, the unexamined life is not worth living. At uh, when we look back, nine months had passed already. So, Meron ba tayong uh, tendency na mag-look back at tanawin how are we doing for those nine months? Ayun, yung uh, to examine 
uh, the life that we spent already, kumusta tayo? How are we doing? Mga kapatid, minsan talaga, we need to look back. Sometimes, we need to look back. We need to slow down and examine our life and think if we are living a good life. Diba sabi ng Lord, kaya siya inaparito para bigyan tayo ng buhay at ng fullness nito. So, how are we doing? Are we living a good life? A person who wants to live a good life, he needs to look back and see if he really lived a good life. According to survey, sabi doon, 90% daw ng people, ng tao, never examine his life. So, ibig sabihin, nagpapatiinod lang kung ano ang takbo ng buhay. Alam niyo ba na part of examined life is to look forward once you examine your previous life. Kaya kadalasan, hirap tayong mag-look forward at hindi natin alam yung direction nito kasi we never examine our previous life. Kung ina-examine natin, tinatanaw natin mabuti yung mga previous life natin, definitely part of it to look forward. At kung sa tingin mo, as you examine your life, need mo ng help, you need to ask help from God. Only then that you can ask God help. And only then na aayusin mo ang buhay mo. Kaya kung minsan may mga tao, dire-direcho na po na nawawala sa Lord kasi they never examine His life. So, and pag nalaman mo na you need help after you examine your life, then find a good person and ask help. Alam niyo, we need marami po na good person na nariyan lang sa tabi-tabi pero kasi hindi natin kailangan yung help nila kaya wala sila sa buhay natin. Thinking natin, okay lang tayo. Pero may need na pala tayo. So, this month of October, yung preaching series natin revolves sa prepare to meet your God. Actually, this is a prayer ko. Actually, before po ako pumunta ng US, meron na akong dire-ready na preaching series. Pero yung nandun po ako sa US, na iba po yung takbuhin nito. As I listen, as I contemplate, then I ask the Lord, what do you want me to do on the last quarter of this year? And that is, prepare to meet your God. We are now preparing for our 2024 planning. Maraming nangyari sa nagdaang siyam na buwan. We need to look back as a church. And as leaders and members of this church, we need to look back. But we need to look forward after that. So we all need preparation and starts with ourselves. We need to align ourselves with what the Word of God is telling us. Only in abiding with this word, then we are secured. Alam nyo, bilang uh, pastor nyo, I cannot count on my own wisdom. I cannot count on my own self to lead this church. I want God to lead this church. Wala akong kaibahan sa inyo, tao ko. Only God can move the hearts of the people. Only God can change the heart of the people. And I cannot do that. Kaya, yan po yung ating tatakbuhin. And I don't want my leadership to deprive you of what God wants for SBC. Kaya purihin po ang Panginoon for this message na inilagay niya sa heart ko. Kasi kung hindi po tama ang puso natin, hindi rin tama ang tatakbuhin natin. It should start from the heart. So let's read our timbers for our preaching series in Amos 4.12. Sabi dyan, Therefore, thus I will do to you, O Israel, because I will do this to you. 
Prepare to meet your God, O Israel. Sa Tagalog, mga taga-Israel, gagawin ko ito sa inyo. Kaya humanda kayong humarap sa inyong Diyos. Hayan. Let's uh, look at the background of this passage. Okay. The prophecy of Amos covers the period between 786 to 746 BC when Jeroboam II was king of Israel and Uzziah was the king of Judah. The same period that is covered by Hosea and Isaiah. Kaya kung babasahin niyo po itong Amos and then yung, yung, uh, yung kay Hosea and kay Isaiah, makikita niyo yung pagkakamukha nito. So during those period, it was a time of peace and prosperity for the people of Israel. However, it was also a time of a spiritual decline. For while they continued their temple services and seasonal celebrations, they had forsaken their relationship with God, they were disobeying the laws of God, they were manifesting their spiritual immaturity in their actions and attitudes towards one another. Okay, let's pause here. Yung una, sabi niya, it was also a, uh, it was a time of peace and prosperity for the people of Israel. Wow. Peace, a time of peace and prosperity, yet there was also a time of spiritual decline. Look at that. Tuloy-tuloy pa rin yung mga temple services, mga seasonal celebrations. Yet, yeah. in the midst of that, they had forsaken their relationship with God. Disobeying the laws of God and spiritual maturity is being manifested in their actions and attitudes towards one another. Nakikita nyo ba? Pwede pala tayong nasa time of peace and prosperity ng buhay natin, yet we are, we are in the period of spiritual decline. Nandun pala tayo na we are starting to forsake yung relasyon natin sa Lord. Nandun tayo, sinusuway na natin ang utos ng Diyos. And there, that, there were manifestation in our actions and attitudes towards another of being spiritually immature. Amos said he was not from their school of prophets like Isaiah, Hosea. Hindi po siya bilong doon. Siya po isang simpleng sheep, shepherd, shepherder from Tekoa, a small rural village near Bethlehem on the edge of the Judean hills. Hindi po siya among those prophets, so-called prophets. But God had called Amos to warn his people to return to their trust in God or prepare to meet him in judgment. So, because Israel was in a state of rebellion, Israel was headed to captivity. Because they would not repent of their sins in spite of all the prophets' warnings, and the consequences God continually sent upon them. Sa Amos, uh, Amos 4, 6-11, uh, nandun yung details ng some of the reproofs that God sent them. Una, nandyan po, na they lack food. Sabi, ay uh, mayaman sila, no? Pero they lack food. And they had rains withheld from them to the extent that their cities ran out of water. Nandun yung tagtuyot no, na uubusan ng tubig and suffered every type of natural disaster and horrible losses in war. 
So, sinend ito ng Lord sa kanila to get their attention for them to repent of their sins. But, in spite of all this punishment na binigay sa kanila to the point that their destruction was compared to Sodom and Gomorrah, the scriptures repeatedly state, yet, you have not Return to me. Mababasa natin yan sa verses 6, 8, 10, and 11. Probably, maaring iniisip po natin, or in fact, na hindi tayo kasing sama o, katu- o kasing rebelde ng ancient Israel. But, mind you, we need, we must still seriously consider Amos' admonition. Prepare to meet your God because we will all meet Him. So this morning, let us carefully consider this admonition word by word from last to first. So we will begin at the last uh, word, which is God. We do not often think as seriously as we should about God. Are you serious thinking about the Lord? How serious you are. You think about who God is, His nature, His holiness, and His demands. We often do not contemplate that one day we will be personally examined by the just and upright creator of all things. Are we thinking, God? pag nyo sa umaga, ano agad naisip nyo? All throughout the day, sumasagi ba sa isip niyo ang Diyos? Bago matulog, nasa mind niyo ba ang Lord? And tingnan niyo po ang sabi ni Amos. Immediately after telling the people to prepare, Amos reminded them of God's surpassing greatness. Dito sa verse 13. Sabi ni Amos sa verse 13, For behold, He who forms mountains and creates the wind and declares to man what are his thoughts. He who makes dawn into darkness and treads on the high places of the earth, the Lord God of hosts is his name. Yan ang sabi ni Amos. The Lord God of hosts is his name. So, siya yung nag-form ng mountains, siya rin yung nag-create ng wind, ipinahayag sa tao ang kanyang isipan, yung uh, dawn, into darkness, and so many things. The Lord of God opposed is His name. So, He knows and controls all physical matter He knows our thoughts. Sabi ng Hebrews 4.13 And there is no creature hidden from His sight. Yan ang ating Diyos. But all things are open and laid bare to the eyes of Him with whom we have to do. Yan ang ating Diyos. No creature hidden from His sight. All things are open and laid bare to the eyes of Him with whom we have to do. Is that, yan po ba ang pagkakilala natin sa ating Panginoon? So, there are questions here for reflections. Okay. Next slide. How do you view God? Do you still mind his mind sa mga decisions, sa mga plans sa buhay mo? Siya pa rin ba? Siya ba yung may final say sa life mo? So, nakadepende paano mo tinatanaw ang Diyos sa buhay mo. How do you view God? Nakadepende paano mo siyang tinatanaw. 
Only then that you will consider Him in making decisions, in making plans for your life. And kung ganun mo siya kinoconsider, pinagtitiwalaan, siya yung may final say sa life mo. The unexamined life is not worth living. So, it's time for you to examine your life with these questions. The second last word, your. He is our God, whether we acknowledge Him or not. So, we must realize that we are never away from His presence. Sabi ng Psalms 139.7.8, look at this passage. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, behold, you are there. We have to realize that we are never away from His presence. Di tayo pwede magtago sa Diyos. Kahit anong tago mong gawin, God is with you there. Sa langit, maging sa shoal or impierno, you are there. The fact that we would deny God, kahit i-deny mo pa siya, does not change the fact that God is still watching and noting. He take note of our deeds for judgment. Jeremiah 23.24 says, can a man hide himself in hiding places? So I do not see him, declares the Lord. Mga kapatid, our God is not only ever present in life, but He will also be present after death. We cannot get away with His presence. Just as Amos admonished Israel to prepare, Solomon taught all to give thought to God. Ecclesiastes 12 Six to seven, sabi niya dyan, uh, it's about yung uh, death, foreseeing death. Sabi dyan, remember him before the silver cord is broken and the golden bowl is crushed. The pitcher by the well is shattered and the wheel at the cistern is crushed. Then the dust will return to the earth as it was and the spirit will return to God who gave it. Mga kapatid, bago dumating yung tagdilim, tag, uh, takip silim daw na tinatawag, ito itong ko sa age ng tao. Ayan, ikaw dati, ito edad mo. Ngayon, ito ka na, patanda ka na ng patanda. Remember him before it happens. Then, sabi niya, the dust will return to the earth as it was. And the spirit will return to God who gave it. So, remember Him. For too many, meeting God at death will be a first introduction. This is not because God did not make Himself known, but because they ignored to all that God has said and done. God has spoken, but they have not listened. Kumusta po tayo? Ngayon, the, here are my questions for reflections and that is to examine our life. Are you still listening and mindful of your God? Nakikinig pa rin ba tayo sa Diyos? Ang daming tinig sa mundong ginagalawa natin. Tinig ng matatalino. Tinig na mauusay. Tinig ng ating sarili. So, are you still listening and mindful of your God? Do you do things as if God doesn't know it all? Hmm? Hindi naman ako nakikita ni Pastora o ng aking D-group leader. Nakalimutan na si Lord ang nakakakita sa Kanya na wala na yung takot sa Diyos. Sa heart mo, 
Siya pa rin ba ang sentro nito? Mga kapatid, the unexamined life is not worth living. Then, second to the last, ng, uh, oh, third na ba ito? To meet. Ano, prepared to meet your God. The unprepared will meet with God just as certainly as the prepared one. The scripture teaches that an interview with God is inevitable. Next slide, please. Second Corinthians 5.10 Sabi dyan, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may be recompensed for his deeds in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Mabuti, masama, lahat ng ito. Lahat tayo haharap sa judgment seat of Christ. And God doesn't want us to come before Him ignorant and unprepared. That's why God sent His prophets, then later His Son, and the apostles telling men to prepare. And also, He also partners conclusive proof that the judgment meeting will come. Basahin po natin yung sabi ng Acts 17, 30-31, hindi nagkulang ang Diyos. Hindi nagkulang, nagpaalala sa kanyang salita ang Panginoon. Sabi niya, therefore, having overlooked the times of ignorance, God is now declaring to men that all everywhere should repent because He has fixed a day in which He will judge the world in righteousness to a man whom He has appointed, having finest proof to all men by raising Him from the dead. The, the God has sent His Son Jesus for us. We cannot escape this meeting with God, mga kapatid. We will never escape this meeting with God. We may run away from many appointments here on earth. Maaring dito, pwede kayong hindi dumalo sa mga appointments na meron kayo. But, with God, you cannot escape the meeting with Him. Encountering God one day is sure. We all have to face God whether we are believers or not, rich or poor, and prepared or not. It is wise to get prepared for that day. Kaya mga kapatid, here are the reflection again, question for reflection. Sabi, it is wise to get prepared for that day. Are you examining your life constantly? Especially your heart condition and then dealt with it of some sins. Have you tried to confront yourself and not overlook but repent? Are you on the watch for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ? The unexamined life is not worth living. And then the last one, prepare. Napakahalaga po ng preparation. Prepare to meet your God. The need to prepare to meet God is clearly recognized by all who understand what will happen when we meet. There will be a thorough judgment of all sinners based on all their sins. Revelation 20.12, sabi dyan, And I saw the dead the great and the small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged from the things which were written in the books according to their deeds. Mga kapatid, walang makaka-escape nito. This is for sure. And since we know that this will gonna be happen, we will get properly prepared ourselves. Some make inadequate preparations. Secular education is not proper preparation 
to meet God. Nagpapakadalubhasa tayo sa pag-aaral. Nagpapakadalubhasa tayo para ma-promote sa ating mga trabaho. Umunlad ang kabuhayan. Hindi po yan masama. We spend too much time sa maraming bagay yet neglecting the most important one. I was refreshed sa pagpunta ko ng U.S. I have fellowship with many leaders of IGM. I had the opportunity uh, to discuss things about the D12. Naka-attend din ako ng uh, graduation ng Grace Encounter ng E2. And sa mga testimony nung limang graduates, super dami nila, all E2 were there, <laughs> bringing so many uh, masasarap na pagkain. Punong-puno ang lamesa. Kasi bawat isa may bit-bit, ano, for the celebration. Nandun din si Pastor Shin. And yung testimony ng iba doon ay yung isa, seven years na siyang inooikos. Imagine nyo, isang soul, seven years inooikos bago maging candidate. And yung asawa niya ay isang uh, atheist. And sa pamagitan ng kanilang anak, Napilitan silang pumunta sa church kasi enjoy na enjoy yung bata sa mga awitan at uh, body worship. Pero silang mag-asawa, nung first time nilang mag-visit ng church, ang feeling nila, ano ba ito, napaka-weird ang galawan. Pero dahil sa anak nila, napilitan silang pumunta. Natagalan nung kanyang asawa yung unang araw kasi mahaba po yung uh, EG, yung uh, grace encounter nila. Pero nakapagtapos yung wife. At sabi niya, kakaiba ang church ng IGM for all the churches that have gone, that they have visited. Also, the other is the same then. At merong mga nag-ooikos doon 10 years and yet nothing happens still. Pag ang isa ay nakakilala sa Lord na naging part ka ng ito at ang layo, lilipat po yung tao na ito near Irvine, near the church kung saan naroon, to be in the, with the community. At kahit mahirap sila, gumagawa sila ng mga ways and means para mag-share sa isang uh, bahay. Yung nag-treat sa amin sa Universal Church, Bago lang siya sa ito. Siya ang nagtreat sa amin sa Universal Church. Ay, Universal Studio pala. Grabe po. Kaya napagkamalan ko siya na manggagawa doon kasi pagdating namin, kaagad siyang kinamayan ako. Hello po. Hello, hindi pala po. Wala. Hi. Siya na ang humawak ng wheelchair ko all the while. Mga kapatid, we need to prepare to meet God. There are two books there and we will be judged according to our deeds written on that book. Secular education is not proper preparation to meet God. Kaya, Sabi ng Colossians 1, 21, the world through its wisdom did not come to know God. Mga kapatid, we, will, we can never be good enough to meet God on our own terms or accomplishments. Sabi ng Titus 3, 5, He saved us not on the basis of deeds which we have done in righteousness. Next slide. Titus 3.5 He 
He saved us not on the basis of deeds which we have done in righteousness, but according to His mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewing by the Holy Spirit. The only proper and effective preparations to make to meet God are rebuilt in His Word. Psalms 199 says, How can a young man keep his way pure? By keeping it according to your word. And also, Ecclesiastes 12, 13, and 14, the conclusion when all has been heard is fear God and keep His commandments because this applies to every person. For God will bring every act to judgment, everything which is hidden, whether it is good or evil. Mga kapatid, there's wisdom in that. Ito po ang tungkulin ng tao. So, let first thing the first thing. Let the, let the main thing the main thing. Amen? Kung hindi po natin ito alam, alamin na po natin ito, whether you like it or not, hindi po natin may escape ang ganitong bagay. Paano natin sasabihin sa ating master, Lord, wag muna. Oh Lord, pwede bang ang akin ang mangyari? That cannot be. Take it or leave it. Another one, but having begun your preparation is not the same as completing your preparations. Marami ang nagsisimula ng tama, pero they stop along the way. Nagpasimula siya ng okay, pero later, ba't ganito na siya? Kaya mahalagang we start right and we end right. Doon papasok yung sinasabi ni Socrates, the unexamined life is not worth living. At dito po mahalaga yung accountability group. Mayroong tumatanaw sa'yo, mayroong nag-aalaga sa'yo. Maraming Kristiyano o maraming Christians, very good sa pasimula, pero later nawawala. Sabi ni Pastor Shin in one of our devotions, a person can either be better or can be bad. Kaya need ng tao na tanawin ang kanyang buhay. Kung nasaan na siya o saan ka na papunta. And once you examine your life and realize you need help, ask God for help. That makes or gives you a teachable heart. Marami po, lalo na sa kalalakihan. Ang mga babae, madali pong mag-ask ng help. I need help. Pero kalamihan ng mga kalalakihan, it's difficult for them to ask help. Even to God. Pero alam nyo ba, napakahalaga pala ng asking help? Kasi that makes or gives you a teachable heart. Only then that you will have teachable heart kung mag ka ng help. Then, look for a good person na nariyan sa paligid mo and ask help from him or her and decide to follow that good person. Good life is always a choice, a decision you make. Grabe po yung uh, mga karanasan ko talaga doon. Mas nakapag-spend kasi kami ng time talaga sa church at fellowship with other leaders. Doon talaga, open rebuke. Ang Pinoy, malasibuyas. Ang hirap mag-correct. Pero doon talaga, sasabihan ka, one time sa salita ni Pastor Shin, if you are poor in coming here, start to type. Kasi that's the key for blessing. At nung nagkaroon sila ng uh, fundraising, $10,000 for a meal, for dinner. Even the very children, yung very young, mga anak-anak ng mga miyembro, they did. One million dollars lang ang kanilang target. They make it 
to 1.5. Mga kapatid, hindi natin pwedeng baliwalain ang katuroan ng Diyos at ang ating isipan ang ating gamitin sa kingdom ng heaven. In the kingdom of heaven, there is no subtraction. Always multiplication. Always addition. And I have experienced that myself. Mga kapatid, Look for a good person and ask help from him or her and decide to follow that good person. Good life is always a choice, a decision you make. Many Christians risk their souls with so much left undone, inside and out, when it comes to morals, faithfulness, and service. How many need to heed up the warnings of the Lord? Kaya in Revelation 2.4 and 3.16, sabi doon, But I have this against you, that you have left your first love, because you are lukewarm, and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Any Christian who is no longer completely ready to meet their God has only one way to become prepared again. You must return to Christ with full devotion. This is what the Lord directed the unprepared in His churches. We have still time as we wait for the Lord's coming. Revelation 2.5 says, Remember therefore from where you have fallen, and repent, and do the deeds you did at first, or else I am coming to you, and will remove your lampstand out of its place unless you repent. Unless you repent. Or as Peter told a man in sin in Acts 8.28, ang sabi doon, Therefore repent of this wickedness of yours and pray the Lord that if possible, the intention of your heart may be given to you. May be given to you. Mga kapatid, what all we need is repent, pray, and reform. You're not prepared until you do. The old saying the base sa scripture is that heaven is a prepared palace for a prepared people. Ito yung sinasabi ni Jesus sa John 14.2, In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. It is prepared for us, mga kapatid. So, we must be equally prepared for it. So, it is essential that we are prepared to meet God. The alternative is simply too horrible to contemplate. At mababasa natin ito sa Matthew 25 and then Thessalonians. Sabi dyan, and cast out the worthless slave into the outer darkness. In that place, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This will pay the penalty of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. Ito po yung katotohanan. We prepare ourselves for so many things in life. We get prepared for exams, my students, we get prepared for our job, interview, right? We get prepared for a birthday party, to get married, to build a house, to have children, and the list goes on. Ganon tayo kagaling mag-prepare ng mga events. Since we make so many preparations for different events here on earth, have we taken into consideration that we need to get prepared to meet God? Are we ready to face God and spend eternity with Him? Mga paalala ng mga salita ng Diyos, 
We have to keep in mind that everything that we are busy preparing here on earth will just vanish. Wala, lilipas lang yon. Hindi mananatili, mawawala din yon. But preparing yourself to face God will remain eternal. Matthew 6.20 There are two kinds of future that awaits us. There are two kinds of future that await us. First, that which is certain. Second, that which is uncertain. Eh, ano ba yung mga certain things? Like, you will get old. Tatanda tayong lahat, right? And isang araw, tayo mamamatay. That's certain. Another naman, yung that which is uncertain, you may be rich, but you may not be rich. Uncertain yon. So there are, there are two kinds of future. That's why you should prepare for the certain one. Prepare for the next life by clinging to God's love, to God's mercy, and to God's grace. Then, devote your whole life in Him. That's the best investment we could invest sa life na ito. We can carry it sa eternity. So, as we look forward to our planning for 2024, for year 2024, let us all begin with ourselves. Where are you now? Where you will be? Do you need help for the better of yourself? Kaya I encourage the church na talagang uh, seeking after God's heart. Seeking after His mind. Ang church ay 45 years na po. The tendency for the old church, nagdaday down po yung passion. Katulad ng sinabi kanina, yung first love. Minsan, nakabase na tayo sa ating kanurnungan, katalinuhan. Hindi na consider ang mind ni Christ. God has laid bare in His Word all His will. Kaya, I challenge, as your pastor, I want to lead this church to where God wants it. Not mine, not to anyone. We will perceive, we will be sensitive to the will of God if we are connected with God. Napakahalaga po nun. Kaya, ang sabi ko, katulad nung sa Israel, hindi sila umaalis sa lugar nila hanggang hindi humihinto yung clouds by, by day. Yung fire, by night. Mga kapatid, it's time to seek the Lord. Of course, the Great Commission will always be our focus. But, let's make it a point that our hearts is connected with God. Then and only then that we will track the plan of God in our church. So, what should we do? Let's begin by consecrating ourselves to God. How? Examine natin yung mga sarili natin. And then, just ask the Lord to search our hearts. And as the Lord is search our heart, let's repent of all our sins, known or unknown. Then began to seek Him with an undivided heart and mind. Then humble ourselves before Him, acknowledge Him, Acknowledging we are nothing without Him. Surrendering everything to Him. And worship Him alone. Exalt Him forever in our daily living. And throne God at the center of our heart. 
then empty ourselves so God can fill it up again. Tayo po'y manalangin. Hallelujah. Salamat sa iyong mga salita, Panginoon. Let your word continuously help us to examine our life, O Lord God. As your creature, all we need to do is just submit ourselves into your hands. Panginoon, Salamat sa iyong mga salita. Nagpapaalala sa amin kung sino ka. Sino kami. At kung ano ang mga dapat naming gawin upang yung pagkatawag mo sa amin ay siya naming lakaran. Siya naming gampanan. Ama, sa oras po na ito, nais po muli naming i-consecrate ang aming mga sarili sa iyong banal na harapan. Acknowledging of who you are. Wala kaming magagawa, O oh Diyos, kung wala ka sa amin. Patawarin mo kami kung kami po ay nakapangunguna sa iyo. Sa halip na kami ay mag-wait on you at sumunod lamang sa kung anong direction mo. Dahil ikaw ay forgiving God, nandiyan pa rin ang protection mo, Panginoon. Ama, sa kabuan ng iyong iglesia, from the leadership to the membership, Lord, take over us. Take over our hearts, our minds. Take over our lives. Sa aming pagtanaw na naman, O Lord God, sa next year, 2024, we need your help. We need your help, Lord God. Give us the wisdom that we need. Purify our hearts, circumcise our hearts, Lord God, that it won't go against you, but just lean on you. Lord, salamat. Salamat sa iyong pagmamahal na walang hanggan. Salamat na nariyan ka na palagi kaming ginagabayan. Salamat na lagi kang nagpapatawad sa aming mga kasalanan. Salamat na di ka nagkulang. Salamat sa iyong biyaya at kahabagan. Kaya sa umagang ito, Lord God, as we look for our communion, alam kong ready na ang puso ng bawat isa. Remembering the great love that we ever had and that is by Lord by giving us your son Jesus Salamat Panginoong Jesus for laying down your life for us at tulungan mo kami na ang buhay na ito na nagkaroon ng halaga ng value dahilan sa iyo ay magamit lamang namin para sa iyong kalwalhatian, para sa iyong plano, para sa iyong naisin, O Lord God, habang nabubuhay pa sa mundong ito. Kaya patuloy, Lord God, na pagpalain mo ang mga simbolo ng iyong katawan na nabayubay doon sa krus, simbolo ng dugo na natigis sa krus ng kalbaryo para sa kabayaran ng aming mga kasalanan. Pagpalaan mong lahat ng ito at sa bawat isa natatanggap ay ito'y maging pagpapala. Ito po 
ay tunay na magpaalala sa amin na we belong to you alone. As we wait for your coming, Panginoon, sa second coming mo, may you find us faithful, may you find us waiting faithfully for your coming. Salamat. Itong aming dalangin sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen.